So meaning making is a constant process that human beings are always engaged in. Um, anything you do, any experience you meet, any time you act into your inner world or the outer world, um, what's happening first is that you're filtering all the available data so that you can orientate yourself and respond appropriately to the situation. So meaning making is a whole set of tacit and explicit processes that allow you to engage in the world internally and externally in a well-orientated way. So for example, it's how you interpret situations. It's what you make of the things that happen to you. And so there's always two sides to our experience. There's the side of the experience which has to do with what's happening to me or what's happening around me. And then there's the side of what do I make of that? And meaning making is really all about that interaction between those two things. It's all about self in context. And so, of course, in a leadership environment or in an organization environment, that's incredibly important because there's a very complex context and the nature of the relationship to the context usually involves a huge amount of self-management, processing, strategy and so on. And meaning making is really at the heart of all of those processes of communication, interaction, strategy and leadership. So when you're looking at the shape of meaning making, we look at it in terms of what we call action logics. And action logics are different forms of meaning making that are active. They're quite different, but they interact and they can be active at the same time in the same person in the same situation. So what we do is we start to help people understand which action logics tend to be active and how influential they tend to be in the overall picture. And by doing that, it gives a person an opportunity to really think about how that's working for them and whether that fits well with the context that they're in and the challenges they face, or whether there are areas they want to develop further. And it's only when you really see the shape of your meaning making that you can make those more informed choices and in a better orientated way. The first well-known writer about development was a psychologist called Piaget, who did some fantastic work in the 50s to track and document what changed as children grew up into adults. Um, at that time, there was still a prevailing idea that once you reached adulthood, roughly in your mid-twenties, there wasn't much to say about development afterwards. It was all a question of more experience, more experience, more experience. Um, at the same time, independently, uh, uh, there was a, a, a chap called Claire Graves wrote a book called Levels of Human Experience in which there was an underlying uh, hierarchical model uh, of the development of ideas and the development of frameworks. This then informed um, the work of Jane Lovinger in the 70s and what she was trying to do was to explain why uh, young offenders in the US prison system some of them were recidivist and some were not and traditional um, psychometrics and psychology psychology models weren't very good at explaining that or predicting who would be and so she developed the first version of the sentence completion test which is you know central to the, the LDF since the 70s, there have been several people who've really advanced the field. Robert Keegan, um, Kohlberg, Bill Torbert, uh, Suzanne cook Greuter, and, 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 and our founder, David Rook, who's worked with, with uh, all, uh, all of those except for Keegan, I think, um, to develop the, the field, develop the model, develop the framework, and develop the tools with which we can use it in organizations. So we know from a lot of uh, contemporary neuroscientific research and psychological research, uh, in fact we've known this for about the last 25 years, um, that when you're under pressure, the way in which your cognitive neuropsychology works shifts. Uh, the nature of the way you process information changes, the depth of processing changes. It's as if you go through the cognitive equivalent of the narrowing of your eyesight, that sort of tunnel vision, and you have a kind of tunnel thinking. And what essentially happens is you process less data because you're seeking to process only the absolutely essential data. And it means that the complexity and sophistication of your thinking tends to become less, uh, and in some circumstances it can be impaired. One of the things that really sort of is valuable from a developmental perspective for clients is it, it allows them to create practices and habits that they can carry with them, not just within the coaching context, but beyond that. They learn skills around inquiring, understanding and appreciating what's going on in the moment for them. And it's, it's very, very different from just actively pursuing, I want to get from A to B. 
and what are the things I need to navigate to get there. So there's an initial part which is landing the concept of the LDF framework and landing the profile itself so that they understand it and they can know what to do with it. Once that's done, the information in the report allows them to make smart choices about where they might focus their activity from a developmental point of view and in the knowledge that that will take them forward in the direction they want to go, as opposed to just picking something that looks interesting from a long list of things that are good for leaders to learn about, whether it's emotional intelligence or praise and reprimand or you know, strategic thinking or whatever. So it helps them to choose a direction which will take them forward more quickly and more reliably than other, other, um, uh, other tools. Uh, and of course, the, this then really accelerates the coaching process and the developmental process. So a particular relevant example at the moment is a team, a senior leadership team in a multinational organization, a very effective team, a business in significant growth at the moment. Uh, but using the LDF has brought them to the realization that their their capacity for expert and achiever meaning making is hugely valuable. But where they're encountering complex problems, they need to stretch their capacity uh, for late stage meaning making. Uh, and this has really validated them in many ways, but still given them a hunger to engage in further development. So with executive MBA programs, uh, it appears now that there is general acceptance and recognition that the focus needs to go beyond the downloading of knowledge and the development of skills. And there's an increasing focus now on the vertical development of young leaders uh, so that they can have a broader perspective, a bigger impact, uh, and that they can continue to engage in their own development after they've completed their university programs. So the impact of vertical development on executive MBA students has been really interesting. Uh, initially, a kind of a nervousness about the invitation to look in and to examine themselves and to engage in their own development. But then a huge dividend from the fact that everybody uh, on the program is engaged in this together. And uh, very often, most value is delivered by the work they do on each other, where they both challenge and support each other in their own vertical development. Uh, the feedback uh, on vertical development modules on the MBA programs I've worked in has been hugely positive. And, um, and very often, the most enjoyable module the students have been involved in. So quite often when I'm working with coaching clients, I find that they they don't necessarily have specific goals that they're aiming towards. There aren't specific coaching questions that they're wanting to address. There's something that they're looking for that's about broadening their perspective and deepening their understanding of themselves and how they're operating in the organisation they're in. You know, it really is quite a sort of transformational process when you see it in action. So there are a few things that we find helpful for a person to develop their meaning-making capacities. Um, and the first thing that we tend to find particularly important is that there's a developmental focus. So an area that they've identified or that people around them have helped them to identify that's more than just the application of new skills and knowledge, but something that involves deepening or extending your capability and particularly something that might involve looking at the way you make sense of the world and respond to the circumstances that you face. Uh, that could be in relationships, it could be in the system, or it could just be something about your own pressures. So once there's a clear developmental focus, maybe a challenge, the second piece has to do with developmental intent. So some sort of clear intention to work into that space. And that's not always present. You need a certain amount of cognitive space and emotional space to pick something up and work with it. And we don't always feel like we're in that position all the time. So assuming that those two things are in place, what we then typically find is that people need some, some kind of an orientating framework. So the framework we talk about in Heart Hill is the Leadership Development Framework, which is a really robust, quite simple, but also far-reaching framework that cuts across the whole lifespan, which means it can really help you evolve over the long term as well as work with these shorter term and medium term challenges and development opportunities. Once you've got an orientation, 
that gives you a kind of framework within which to work and uh, make decisions about how you spend your energy and, and how you continually develop certain specific areas of your meaning making. And then lastly, you need some data. So as well as having an orienting framework, you need something that shows you which bits of that framework are the most relevant to you. So once you've got all of those pieces, you can put that together and, and engage in a process that we describe as developmental inquiry. So developmental inquiry is saying, okay, how do I bring all of these pieces together? My challenge, the framework, the data, various practices, so that I can really start to develop the things that matter to me and help me make more of a difference in my role.